Amigos, que tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks, coming to you today from Portugal. And we're going to be revisiting one of the videos that I did a few years ago, which is the pros and cons of moving to Portugal this year in 2019. And we'll see if some of the uh, pros are still the same, and we'll see if some of the uh, cons are still the same as well. So let's go and check out a bit of this small town where we are now. About 50 kilometers north of Lisbon. In a town called Torres Vedras. And we're going to uh, check out Portugal from a quality of life point of view. And I will say before we begin that Portugal is one of my favorite countries in the world, or at least in Europe. And I try to spend as much time as I can here as possible. So let's go and check this place out. The famous Aussie there, old Chris Hemsworth, getting a bit of a profile here in Portugal. Now, although you might not know it from this busy street behind me, the Portuguese economy is booming at the moment. And in fact, the Portuguese prime minister has called for all of the Portuguese immigrants, people that have left the country in the last decade or so, he wants them back and he's offering them a lot of incentives to, uh, to get them to come back tax rebates, other advantages, cheap loans if you start a business and all of those types of things. But there's also a bit of a catch there as well because even though the Portuguese economy is booming, it still has some problems, in my opinion. And one of the pros of Portugal obviously is the cost of living, but that's also one of the negative things as well because it means that salaries are not generally high. So if you are retired, this place is an absolute paradise. But if you're thinking of coming here to work and you're not in one of the uh, fashion uh, professions at the moment, like computer programming or something along those lines, keep in mind that salaries are gonna be low. In fact, the minimum wage here is about 600 euros a month, which is not a lot of money. But then again, as I said before, the cost of living is not high. So you can live here relatively cheaply, uh, especially if you're not in one of the bigger cities. So a place like this is a perfect place to uh, keep in mind and you are connected to the capital city. Now I bought a small apartment in Portugal about 10 years ago with the idea of coming here to live one day, simply because for me the quality of life here is second to none. If you like a relaxed way of life, if you like the coast, if you like great food, and Portugal is definitely one of those countries that you'd have to have high up on your list. And uh, as I said at the beginning of this video, for me, the pros outweigh the cons, especially if you're retired. Now you have to remember that the crisis really hit Portugal hard and a lot of the skilled workers were forced to leave the country and go to other countries in Europe, France, Spain, Luxembourg, the UK, lots of people were forced to leave the country. And now that the economy is up and running again, uh, people are starting to come back. And that's what I mentioned before, that the Prime Minister needs people to come back. But there's a bit of a catch-22 because once you leave a country like this and you start making uh, a Northern European salary, then really what's the attraction of coming back? Of course, you've got the sentimental reasons, you've got the family reasons, but you can take care of those in summer at the end of the day. And uh, that's gonna be one of the big dilemmas for the Portuguese government is to convince people that are making better salaries abroad to come back and live here on inferior salaries because as I have said, the minimum salary here, about 600 euros a month. I think it's about 1,100 the average salary here. So to get people to come back for a, a salary along those lines is not gonna be easy. And here you can see a house in the middle of Torres Pedras that has been abandoned. Maybe people went away to work in another country. Maybe they just died, who knows? But this is a house smack bang in the middle. It's been, looks like it's been abandoned for a few years. The cost of housing in Portugal is also reasonable. Back in the day, 10 years ago, I managed to pick my small apartment up for about 105,000 euros. And if I compared that at the time with the prices in Spain, Portugal was a lot cheaper to buy property. Of course, in big cities like Lisbon and Porto, you're gonna have uh, higher prices, 
but uh, in a place like this or even in Peniche, 80 kilometers north of Lisbon, you can pick up houses for a reasonable price. If you've got a car, uh, you can get around by car quite easily here. But that's also one of the cons of Portugal and I'll explain that in a minute. And the Portuguese coffee culture is also a pro of this country. Time seems to sit still for the Portuguese when they're having a coffee. They take time out of their day to sit down, have a coffee, have maybe a snack, and uh, they drink quite a lot of coffees a day, something that I have noticed. But uh, takeaway coffee is not a thing here, which is something that I like, and uh, to be able to sit down, relax, have a chat, and uh, have a coffee is a definite pro of uh, Portugal. Another thing I love about this country is the parks. Portugal has great parks. Even a little one like this in the middle of the uh, city here is a place that you can relax, enjoy the grass, enjoy the people walking by, and a uh, great place to just take a few minutes out of the day. And of course, with all of the recent gun violence in the US, a country like uh, Portugal is a safe option to live. There's no gun culture, you can walk the streets, people are not in your face, you don't see a lot of alcohol related violence as well. Of course there's going to be uh, people that uh, can cause you problems, especially in the big cities like Porto or Lisbon, but in small places like this I mean there's absolutely no violence at all. Kids walk around the streets at all times of the day, uh, it's a really safe place and uh, from a security point of view highly recommended. Now for me another one of the best things about this part of Portugal is the climate. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it has an Atlantic climate and uh, that for me is a big plus, especially when you live in a place like Madrid which is freezing in winter and boiling hot in summer. I mean it is hot here but it's not extremely hot. I mean you're on the coast, you can always go for a swim and that is an absolute plus of a place like Portugal. As I said the winters are mild. Uh, they're not extremely cold. You need heating, but you don't need uh, central heating like you do in a place like Madrid or other parts of Spain. In the north of Portugal you probably would, but in this part of Portugal here, the, uh, the weather is reasonably mild and definitely an attraction and a reason that you should come or at least consider living in a place like this. There always seems to be a breeze blowing which keeps you cool as well, so that's a plus. And of course, walking through these narrow cobblestone streets, always a pleasure here in Portugal. You never know what you're gonna find uh, when it comes to little shops and little businesses that are a little bit obscure. Fantastic, this one here, a lodge of the koala. So I don't know what they sell. Obviously they don't sell koalas, but that's what you can find in Portugal. And you've got a lot of traditional businesses here as well. So you can see a shoemaker. Can't remember the last time I saw a shoemaker in Australia, but there you have the Sapoteiro Ventura. So the traditional business is still alive here in this part of Portugal. Now I'm on my way to buy a bottle of wine. I saw a fantastic wine shop when I was having lunch and Portuguese wine is also one of the things that uh, you need to visit this country for. Um, I'm not going to promote alcoholism of course but uh, a glass of wine with lunch never goes astray and uh, Portuguese wines are as good as any in the world. Combine it with the food and you have one of the perfect combinations and uh, that is a definite reason to uh, move to this country. Here's an example of a typical menu here in Portugal. Fish soup, you have a type of uh, cod, and then you have uh, fried chicken with rice. Bon appetit. Now one of the things I forgot to mention before, and it is a con about Portugal, and that is uh, energy costs. Energy costs here are a lot more than in Spain, especially if you need to fill up your car at the Bowser. You pay a lot more for petrol here than you do in Spain and you also have a lot more toll roads. The toll roads here are an absolute killer so thumbs down for that and uh, that's going to hit your bottom line at the end of the day. And your uh, other costs like uh, gas, if you need gas to provide heating or cooking it uh, is more expensive as well here in Portugal. 
Okay, so I'm back in Peniche now and I'll sum this video up by saying that Portugal is a retiree's paradise. If you are planning to come and live in this country as a retiree, nothing but pros in my opinion. It's a relatively cheap country outside the big cities. Lisbon's an expensive city, Porto's an expensive city as well. Not as expensive as some of the cities in north of Europe, of course, but a lot more expensive than some of the other areas in Portugal, especially in the central coast area, which I find to be fairly cheap. The economy's booming at the moment, but uh, as one newspaper said, it's an express train with a risk of derailing. If you're in a sector that is experiencing the boom, it mainly seems to be in tourism. So uh, if you're gonna do a tourism related activity or any other service that's based on that, you'd probably go fairly well. Digital nomads, great place to live if you've got an online business set up. And also if you're working in one of the boom sectors like IT, I'm sure that a city like Lisbon or Porto offers a fantastic opportunity there as well. Cities like Lisbon are absolutely teeming with tourists. I was there a few days ago and I haven't seen such crowded streets in the center of a city for a long time. Maybe on par with Barcelona in that sense, but uh, Lisbon absolutely booming, Porto absolutely booming from a tourist point of view. So if you are planning to come to Portugal and you are going to be looking to get into this economy, be careful uh, it is prone to its ups and downs so uh, keep that in mind but for all other reasons I highly recommend Portugal as a place to live fantastic weather fantastic quality of life one of the best foods in the world what more can I say so that's all questions and comments please leave them in the section below give the video a thumbs up if you liked it I'll see you in the next video at the logo